can't remember a Christmas in living history that I haven't had a proper hysterical crying fit. Cooking! 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 All the expectations of people travelling a long way to have a good time! Why do we eat turkey at Christmas? It is so foul. It tastes of nothing. I have never, ever, nor will I ever, ever cook a turkey. Never mind about men being grumpy at Christmas. What have they got to be grumpy about? For women of a certain age, Christmas is one long, long, long list of shopping, errands, wrapping, cooking, fetching and carrying that starts in mid-September and lasts till you get the house back to normal again on January the 4th. You're bombarded with endless, terrifying articles called The Countdown to Christmas. And there it is, in glorious Technicolor. How to make sure it's stress-free. Yeah, right. And struggle as you might, you get sucked into it. It's your life sentence for the next three and a half months. Everybody starts, don't they? December the 1st, you've got a list. And then you panic. Oh, you add more people to the list. You've got the list. Your other half never has, does anything to do with the list. I am a firm believer in the list. And I make a list, and I put initials next to each thing, who's supposed to do what. And heaven help anybody who touches my list. You just become like a mad woman, and I hate it. And every year I say, I am not going to become a mad woman, and every year I do. The sheer scale of Christmas preparation for grumpy old women is enough to scare the festive boxer shorts off any man. You write out all your menus from Christmas Eve to Boxing Day like Delia does and prepare enough food for an entire army. You're marinating or drizzling or poaching and it's all got to be bought and ordered and picked up. Military campaigns would be easier. Well, because I'm officer in command of the list, I get to keep the fun jobs. I think there are West End productions that actually are done with less preparation than Christmas and probably less expense and last a bit longer. I mean, all this fuss is only a day. The lead up to it, I mean, I wash my curtains, I wash sofas, I have all the cushions of the sofas. I, I mean, I, it's like a spring clean or sometimes even decorate. Although I don't want Christmas to begin till December, I do spend three months preparing for it and then I spend three months debriefing from it. So there's actually only six months in the year when I'm not thinking about Christmas. I'm getting upset now. I can remember when the Christmas decorations went up on Christmas Eve, when you got Christmas carols the week before Christmas. That was when your nativity plays were done as well. And Christmas occupied the Christmas period. I used to be the 12 days of Christmas. Now it's almost the 12 months of Christmas. Shopping at Christmas is beyond horrible. Everyone's frantically trying to get it all done, getting in our way and holding us up. We literally shop till we drop, getting all impatient and hot and bothered and cheesed off. Why can't everyone else be fitted with brake lights and indicators? The first list of presents is long enough to go on to two pages. And as the big day gets closer, this list will get longer and longer. Presents for your kids, presents for your mother to give to your kids, presents for his mother, presents for his mother to give to you, presents for Uncle Bill who doesn't really like presents, presents for your cousin in Sydney. Then someone at work gives you one and you have to buy one back. It's all got to be lugged about or put in the car and taken home and ticked off the list. What happened to retail therapy? I'm a Jew at Christmas, it's an anachronism, isn't it, really? So, you know, when we had kids, then the whole problem is triple because we are totally indulgent and we don't have the backing of being, you know, orthodox, right? So uh, Hanukkah now stretches over as many days as it needs to get to Christmas. Christmas is just terrifying. So I, I have started Christmas shopping in January. I do a bit then and a bit later in sales. But I do some... And I have a Christmas present book. Because so I write down what I bought. Otherwise, I'd, I, I'd forget and buy two things for the same person. <laughs> for me, the pressure to get sort of Christmas organised and done with starts in about February and then leads up to October. And then I like to have all my presents done by October. I don't want to be doing anything in the shops come November. I don't want to be on Oxford Street on Christmas Eve looking for sort of, you know, a boob tube for a nine-year-old. 
uh, and you can get them. You cannot live in this country and not get involved, unless you do what some of my friends do, which is go away to a sort of, um, you know, University of the Third World week, and they go and learn stuff. And I've often thought about it, but... <laughs> I get dragged instead into Harvey Nichols like everybody else. With only a month, 25 shopping days to Christmas, London stores are already crowded. It was so much easier for our mothers. Time was when children were thrilled with one thrifty present. A doll, a teddy, a jolly exciting stocking full of tangerines, a sixpence and a bunty annual. We were just so very much more, well, grateful really. Although I do remember wondering why Father Christmas gave me more than my mum and dad did when I'd only met him once in his grotto. Night for Christmas, a sheen gun and, and a P.C. Dixon's outfit, a train set. A little girl for a train set? Mm, big car. Mm. Big car. How big? Did you get that letter? Well, you'll be a good girl, won't you? Yes. Right, uh, well, bye bye then. Bye-bye. That's it. There you are. Now. I don't approve of the whole game where you pretend to children that there is a person who is going to come and bring them things if they're good, all that crap. Um, I don't approve of the invention of this bogeyman who knows about you and knows whether you've been good or bad and so forth. I think all that's unfair. I think lying to children is despicable. Father Christmas certainly has so very much more to buy these days. Never mind an etch -a sketch or a painting by numbers set, some first class tickets to Disneyland and a top of the range laptop with DVD player is more like it, thank you very much. Then some ghastly craze starts and the kids write off to Santa for this year's hideous must have toy and you'll have to remortgage the house to buy one. I have had some awful Christmases, looking for a Tracy Island, looking for a Power Rangers. My daughter was, I absolutely have to have this Tamagotchi. And it was ridiculous. It became like the, the parental grapevine. My friends would be able to go, they've got Tamagotchis at Toys R Us. And I'd be in the car going, ah, and I'd get there, go, we just sold the last one. And it'd be like, no, no. Have you reordered? Yes. When are they coming in? February. No, no. Back in the car, off somewhere else. There's always one toy that one of your children want that seems to be the flavour of that Christmas. You know, like maybe it's a doll that wets itself or a certain, I don't know, a wrestler or something for Louis or, or there's always one thing that you can never get. else seems to be taking the preparation at all seriously. Your grumpy old man seems to neatly sidestep all this precision planning. You hand him a list, all neatly written out of the presents he needs to get, cards he needs to write, and he doesn't seem to take it on board. For some reason he is able to just get on with real life, get on with his job all through December and lead a normal existence until about lunchtime on Christmas Eve, when he scampers round the shops and throws some things into the boot of the car. Even then, he saunters back, looking very pleased with himself, with only a couple of flimsy little bags to show for it. Men have got no reason to be grumpy at all, because they don't have to do anything. They really don't have to do anything. In fact, my husband goes out on Christmas Eve to buy my present. He's had 364 days of the year to go and get it, and he goes on Christmas Eve to buy my present. Buying presents you, is a gift. You either have it or you don't. Now, you know, my beloved husband, he just, it was agony for him. It wasn't worth seeing him going trudging off up the street, you know, with his overcoat all flapping. It wasn't worth it, and coming back with something that I'd have to take. But, you know, and my son the same. I say things like... I've got to buy my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephew, the cleaning lady, the secretary, this, that, that. and they just look at you incredulously because all they're going to do is buy your present and they're in a complete state about it. 